All right, so let's say that this archaeologist here, he's digging through the layers of rock. Here we have the different layers of rock. And he comes upon in this layer, he finds a fossil animal. And he thinks to himself, well, gee, how old is that, that fossil? He wants to know how old that fossil. Well, what we have here is the bottom layer. We have the orange layer of rock. That's a sedimentary layer of rock. The green layer is a sedimentary rock layer, and the pink layer is a sedimentary rock layer. Well, what is sedimentary rock layers? Well, these are rocks that are formed through deposits of dirt and dust throughout the years, either carried by wind or water, and they build up over the years to form these rock layers. They get compressed until they're really hard. Well, sedimentary rock layers don't give you an actual date. So what an archaeologist needs would be preferable is to find an igneous rock layer. So an igneous rock layer is a rock layer that has been formed from a volcano. And those are formed from lava flows or the uh, you know ash and pumice that spews out from a volcano. So this one right here, this could be a, an igneous rock layer. And so what we have here is we have a way to absolutely date that rock layer. We can get the absolute age because when igneous rock layers cool down, they kind of reset. They have a certain amount of radioactive atoms of a certain element, and then they'll decay over time. So what we can get is if we get the absolute age of this rock layer, then we can say, hey, since this one was deposited first, this sedimentary rock layer is deposited first, and this fossil formed here, we can say, hey, this fossil must be older than this age of this rock layer. All the M&Ms are being turned M side up. M side up represents the radioactive atoms of that element and M side down represents the decay atoms of that element. In igneous rocks we start off with all radioactive uh, atoms of that element. We have 100 radioactive atoms of M&Ms. The shaking of the box represents 713 million years passing in time. Some of the M&Ms are now M side down. M side down the M&Ms are the decay atoms of the M&M element. About half of them have decayed over that 713 million years. You can see in the box that only the radioactive atoms of the M&Ms are left. The decay elements had been put into the cup. Shaking the box again represents 713 million years in time passing. Once again, we pick out the decay M&Ms. Those again are the M&Ms that are M side down. And we leave the, the radioactive atoms of the M&M element in the box. Only the radioactive M&Ms are left in the box. Again, the decay atoms are put into the cup. Shaking the box again, 713 more million years are passing in time. We're taking out the decay atoms of the M&Ms again, leaving the radioactive ones. Again, roughly about half of them have decayed over that 713 million years in time. You can see in the box we have much less radioactive M&Ms than decay M&Ms now. Again, 713 more million years have passed in time. Again, we take out the decay atoms of the M&Ms, leaving the radioactive ones behind. And again, about half of them have decayed over that 713 million years. Again, in the box, we have even less radioactive M&Ms left, and mostly decay ones in the cup. And 713 more million years have passed, and we take a look inside. And again, we see that we have about half decay and half radioactive M&Ms. We take out the decay ones, 
leaving the radioactive atoms of the M&M element. We close the box again with our radioactive M&Ms. 713 million years are passed, as represented by the shaking. Take out the decay M&Ms, leave the radioactive ones in there. Very few radioactive ones left, mostly decay in the cup. Shake it again, 713 more million years have passed. We have three decay M&Ms left in the box. We take those out, and we're left with two radioactive atoms of M&M element left. Shake the box, 713 more million years have passed. We have one decay atom and one radioactive atom left. We shake the box again, 713 more million years have passed. We open it up, and we see inside the box this time we have one M&M left and is decayed, so we have no more radioactive atoms of M&Ms left. So we see all the atoms have decayed. The decayed atoms are in the cup. Let's take a look at our data. Here we have in a bar graph the number of radioactive atoms of M&Ms is 100 and the decay atoms is 0. 713 million years have passed and half of it has decayed because the half-life is the number of years it takes for half the radioactive atoms to decay. So now we have 50% radioactive, 50% decay. Now there's 713 million years has passed. Again, half of that 50 has decayed. And so now we're left with 25 radioactive atoms and 75 decay atoms. And again, another 713 million years has passed. And that's the half time it takes for half the material to decay. So we have 12 radioactive atoms now, 88 decay. Again, the total is always 100. The total, the radi number of radioactive M&Ms plus the number of decay, sorry, atoms, always equals 100. You can't take away atoms, you can't add any atoms. And then finally, toward the end here, we're going to finally get down to one radioactive atom of M&Ms and and eventually we're going to get down to zero. And so at the end you have zero radioactive atoms and then a hundred decay atoms total. So we have no more radioactive left. Okay, we're taking our data that we got from our m and activity and we're plotting on the line graph. On the y-axis we have the number of radioactive m ms On the x-axis we have the time passed in millions of years. So we start off with 100 radioactive atoms of m ms and zero decay. And so 713 million years later, we have half of the material decay. In half-life, it's time it takes for half of the radioactive atoms to decay. And so we go on our graph, we go to 50 radioactive atoms, and go to the right, and we hit the line, and then we go down, and we see that 713 million years has passed. We're going to do another 713 million years, so half of 50 is going to be around 25. So we have about 25 radioactive atoms left and that means we have 75 decay so we're going to go from the left to the right and we're going to hit the line from that line we're going to go straight down and it's going to be around 1.4 billion years has passed now in real life this is modeled after uranium-235 uranium-235 has a half-life of 713 million years it can be used to date igneous rock layers from 10 million years old to 4.6 billion years old. This is a method of radiometric dating. We can use it to determine the absolute age of the igneous rock layers. Those are rock layers that are formed from lava. Now if we want to determine the absolute age of fossils, we have to know the position in the rock layers that were found and fossils form in sedimentary rock layers, not igneous rock layers. So if that fossil is found in a sedimentary rock layer above or below that igneous rock layer, we can determine if that fossil is younger or older than the absolute age of that igneous rock layers. So that is how we use radiometric dating and the M&Ms are a simulation of uranium-235 radioactive element.